Okay, everybody, this is my spoiler review of Black Mirror Season 6, Episode 5, Demon 79. This is the finale of this season. This is directed by Toby Haynes, who also directed the episode USS Callister. This is written by Charlie Brooker, but also written with Bisha K. Ali. Now, it's interesting to note that this opens with a label of Red Mirror, and that Charlie Brooker has said in interviews about it, that this was because there's really no tech in this episode, and then he kind of wanted this to be a story adjacent to Black Mirror, even though we do see the Metalhead robot later in the episode, so there could be a crossing path of universes there, but I think it's more of just a label to separate people's expectations about having tech in this. You almost could have slapped this on last episode, episode four, that I think that would have been fitting as well. And again, like I said about episode four, no spoilers, that... They just both feel like they would really work well in Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. And what's funny about that is when I watch Cabinet of Curiosities, there's an episode, if you remember, with the goob, which I actually really loved. And that reminded me a lot of should have been in Black Mirror kind of thing. So I think he's testing the waters to see the reception, like he said, about this Red Mirror-esque universe that's not really focusing on tech. It seems like Charlie Brooker is probably getting sick of writing things about tech and wants to try different areas. I think it'd be very fascinating that next time they do a Red Mirror series and it's clearly labeled that so people can kind of lower their expectations about looking at it as a Black Mirror episode and waiting for tech and something to happen groundbreaking about that. Just keep them kind of organized a little better, but I see what they're doing. This is how they're going to get people to actually give it a shot and see if people in Black Mirror like this type of format as well. Now, what I liked about it was because it takes place in 1979, Demon 79, It has that feel, just the way it's filmed, with the music as well. That feels like the supernatural horror films that were coming out a lot in that time. But where it kind of turned me off a little bit, and this is more preference, was that when we meet the demon, it goes more into the Neil Gaiman vibes, the Good Omens, the American Gods, and this humorous demon. And it kind of started losing me a little bit in that format of it, mixing those two tones. But that's more preference and not me actually reviewing what I thought worked or not. But let's jump into this because there's a lot I really liked about it. And I'm just going to say off the bat, my favorite thing about this episode is the lead performance of Anjana Vasan, who plays Nita. Never seen her before and I thought she was so good here. And I just really thought she carried most of this episode with her performance. We will see in this episode that it opens with the song Bright Eyes, which came out in 1979. And you hear the lyrics, bright eyes burning like fire. Is it a dream? How can those eyes that burn so brightly suddenly burn so pale? What's interesting about this, they start the episode with it and close the episode with it. You have to look at it like a reverse because we see her eyes when they're talking about Burn so pale, they used to be bright. She's starting as someone who's very broken, just numb. And by the end, she gets these bright eyes that her life is now different. She has changed. She has meaning again. And she's already craving a different life, a part of her that's suppressed deep down. And that starts where in the beginning, in the department store, she sees that mannequin with a red jacket. And of course, the red demon, right? Same, she'll drive a red car by then and putting on that red jacket. But that darker force in her is coming out in her. And they do a good job at the beginning, which I really like, when they showed her imagining <laughs> taking Keith Hooligan and choking him and then taking Vicky and slamming her head in the glass. Man, I wish she had gotten her just desserts on Vicky in the end because she was brutal. But that was always in her and that comes fully out in the end. And you see that she has this racist coworker, racist boss. They're all terrible to her. They put her in the basement because her food smells. But this is where she'll find the talisman, which we learn later in the episode. It was from 1926, so you can connect with that too, that there's all these news clippings. And these news clippings were people who were in the same situation and did these murders. And that's also confirmed because it says May Day celebration commences. And this is what the demon was alluding to, that May Day will happen if these murders are not done. But there's a lot of stuff showing her mindset that works well too, like the book she's reading, Creative Visualization. It's a book about using the power of your imagination to create what you want in your life. So it can go to theories too about, was this demon even real? That's also led to the theory because 
in the end when she's in the police station the talisman was normal so you can go with that too that she envisioned all this in her head to kind of bring out what she really wanted to do and broke the moment she was put in the basement but we see rasputin by boney m comes on the screen this song describes rasputin as a playboy mystical healer and we definitely see that is what literally the lead singer she envisions replacing the demon figure of it is like she's attracted to this lead singer and that will form what the demon knows she wants to see. But you see the politics of the episode. It's not just everything that's happening with her co-workers and her boss. It's the climate. And it's the national front. And they even put their logo on the door of her apartment. And Michael Smart, like he says to Vicky later, he's this candidate that isn't running for the national front, but he knows he can get away with their ideals under a different label because people won't vote for that extremist thing because it looks worse to actually win an election. And we also see that Vicky, when she has the image of slamming Vicky in the glass, Vicky is reading a pamphlet for the national front saying, stop immigration, protect British culture. So it's really just an awful situation somebody like Nita is in. Now, Having it be that we meet Gap and she has to carry out three human sacrifices over the next three days of the world is going to end wasn't the coolest premise to me. I think it's stuff like this has been done to death, especially the world is going to end vibe to it. So I would have liked a little more originality, a little more outside thinking that Black Mirror is known for to that kind of concept. So I think these kind of concepts we've seen done to death and blending in this humorous demon vibe started giving me the feeling of bloat in this episode. I thought there was a lot of bloat in the episode in general. I wasn't as engaged in this one as some of the better Black Mirror episodes. I feel like there's a lot they could have trimmed out. I also feel like there was moments that just kept feeling like they were going on and on and repeating the point, especially with when she's all nervous about killing Hooligan in his apartment. They really kept that scene going and going and going. You're like, all right, come on. We know what's going to happen here. Let's get to it. Now, what also though can contribute to theories that this demon wasn't real and she made this up in her head is that the apocalypse part of it was also caused by the nuclear war. So maybe it was just nuclear war timed out that way. And it wasn't just manifested by demons. But we learned from the demon that this assignment was given to her because it can only work on somebody who can be corruptible. Wouldn't work on someone who's just a plain bad person. Now, I like that with the first person she kills, we get to see the awful things he's done to his daughter. She sees them and then kills him. And that later on in the episode, we'll see that complicated part of this that the daughter's life was better now. She had five years of not going through that that she originally went through. We learned she was eventually going to kill herself at 28 but because the father died. That doesn't happen anymore. Her life completely changes. Her future changes. So it leaves thought for you and what's justified in her actions and what's not. But when she does the hooligan killing, my favorite line of the episode is when they get to the apartment and the demon says, looks like he wipes his arse with his house. That was hysterical. But she... Finally kills him with four minutes on the clock, but then has to kill the brother because she can't have witnesses. And it's just an ordinary fellow which bothers Nita. And remember, a lot of the drive too isn't just this excitement she's getting, which is part of it. But the other part of it is the pressure to save the world. Again, billions would die. But we learn Keith doesn't count because he was a murderer. Can't be someone who's directly killed somebody. But clunky writing to me that this switch up happened like this. And I'm not a fan of that where it's just like, oh, and there's this thing that can't happen and ah there's this rule too that i forgot to mention or didn't know you know that's where it's like all right but important line is that the demon says if he fails he gets cast out into an empty void alone forever and she says back to that sounds like my life so that is how bleak her life is where she was before all this encounter with the demon happened and it's interesting that she will choose this lifestyle in the end and go with him into an empty void together but still is a human form it's just that she's picked up and embraced these darker tendencies in herself and that's what he calls her out for too because she says at this moment her whole life she never wanted to harm anyone but he's like you know that's not true and we see that that's clearly shown in the beginning of the episode in what she's imagining doing to people that do her wrong but where things get complicated is that she wants to make her final kill someone as evil as a michael smart who's going to be prime minister he's going to run like a dictator a racist bad dude and this is where the demon's like whoa hold on a second hell's not gonna like that and she's like it's him or no one but this is where the big change in nita happens when she heard michael smart's speech to vicky and that she starts putting her foot down now to the demon to vicky even tells vicky to do her job and leave her alone and even 
The demon says to her, you've changed. And she puts this jacket on, the red jacket. Now, what I thought was also making this a little more bloated than it needed to be was giving so much screen time to the Gary Oldman-esque cop character who is a nice guy and he's the reason that she's not going to kill Michael Smart. But there was just like so much to it with him and this other detective figuring the pieces out that we already knew the answers to. It just bloated it a little more that I think could have just trimmed it down a little bit. But we see with the twist is that the talisman is normal and that nuclear war does happen though. So it still could be that she failed the assignment and this demon was real and that's why she walks away with the demon. So that's up for interpretation. But at the end of the day, she's happy with how this resulted. So again, it's like a twisted ending, sick ending. But Again, the clunky writing happening a lot here where he's like, oh, I figured out a loophole where I can bring a human to this empty void where originally said he could had to be alone. So yeah, that's the stuff that's like, eh. But this is where she's like, I'll give it a go. And the bright eyes begin. She has those bright eyes back in her life. She's not basically dead inside anymore. But did I love this episode? No, I thought it was very okay. And I'm going to give it a 7.3, but that's mostly for the lead performance here of Nita. I thought the actress Anjana Vazan was excellent and made me like this more than I think I would have had if it was somebody else and I really enjoyed she's the one who kept me into it but really also I was pretty bored during it and I think this might have been better to play as episode three and have a play back to back with a similar tone in episode four and then take beyond the sea and make it the big finale and have that big black mirror episode that most people really enjoyed finish this off because this felt like the last two episodes were setting up for a different side project for Charlie Brooker, which is fine. But maybe just keep that in the middle of the season and not have the big bang of Black Mirror. Because I think it does a disservice to the show Black Mirror, what Black Mirror is, what people are signing up for, to have this be the finale. And makes it maybe feel a little more of like, okay, that's a cool, decent note to leave out on. But I don't think it's a memorable Black Mirror episode. It gives me hope, though, that... There could be a Red Mirror show that's really good. I still think this had a lot of positives about it. I just don't know if I thought the clashing vibes worked of that demon story. I feel it could have been better in a wrapping of going balls to the wall with it instead of just adding in the Neil Gaiman-esque humorous demon here. So I don't know if that's personal preference. I just didn't like it i was more excited for more of like a if we're going horror from the 70s and supernatural a more exorcist vibe really go into this character and her mindset than have so much humor with this humorous demon that's me though but overall i did think it was just bloated and it needed to be trimmed down a bit it was a long run time and still wasn't like the most thought-provoking black mirror episode but still solid so let me know you thought of this down below i love to hear your thoughts i read every comment i try to respond as many as i can and the comments help so much if you can subscribe it helps so much again it's so competitive so i appreciate you guys give me your rankings of the season i can tell you right now off the top of my head my favorite was one my second favorite was three then two and then i think there was a drop off in quality with this one being four and then four being the last one which i did not like but i love to hear your thoughts and i'm still very satisfied with this season especially having only one episode that i did not like and for more of me just follow me at steve Show on twitter instagram and tiktok and i'll see you next time